On April 19th, members of the Writers Guild of America voted to go on strike if they could not come to an agreement with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers by May 1st. The WGA states that screenwriters aren't paid enough, calling big corporations hypocritical for stating the importance of writers and then not paying them fairly. The union is also demanding restrictions on AI in the writing room and regulations on the minimum number of writers per room. Many popular TV shows as well as late night talk shows have been postponed or put on hold due to the strike. We went to picket lines in New York City to learn more. The current system devalues writers because over the past 10 to 15 years we've seen a lot of television and film migrate to streaming. And that happens, the industry evolves, but the pay scale and the system that we had in place for writers on typical broadcast cable and normal film features meant that people were able to make a middle class lifestyle and a career as a writer. That part hasn't transferred over to streaming. So people work for much shorter contracts, the writers rooms have shrunk so fewer people are doing the work that used to be done by a whole collaborative group. With these shorter contracts, it's much more difficult for people to make the minimum number of weeks they have to work to access their health care to get vested in their pension. So basically, the studios have kind of copy and pasted TV and moved it over there, subtracted all their labor costs to help their bottom line. So we're fighting to basically just get the rights and the system that we've already fought for and won in television transferred to streaming. When it was just cable and network shows, you got hired to be on a show in a room that would last for 22 episodes so you were guaranteed 30 weeks of work which uh, you know we have a schedule of minimums so you would get paid at least that amount weekly and you would be able to get your health insurance your pension all of that if you wrote for a show that was originally for network all of those numbers are transparent and all of those numbers are used to give writers and actors residuals which is where you get paid every time the show is sold into another market or any time that it is rerun and with streaming, first of all, no transparency, but somebody can watch the same show 15 times and we don't get paid any different. We are getting residuals that are pennies on the dollar versus what we used to get. And writers would rely on those residuals in between jobs to make their earnings for, for the year. With streaming services, the studios have kind of like backed themselves into a corner. Like they've created a technology that consumers love. It's great. It can deliver a vast number of shows, many different kinds of shows. But the thing about that is you you need a tremendous workforce to fill all those pipes. Now the pipes have been built. They're all there. Stuff's got to come out of them. And more is expected of television than ever has been. And yet at the same time, they're trying to find ways to pay fewer and fewer actual humans to do the work and fewer kinds of humans to do the work. You're going to lose the diversity. You're going to lose the experiences of so many different people. Uh, that's the big worry. And with streaming, I mean, it's here. It's been built. The machine has been built. Now we have to decide what we're going to do with it. Are we going to fill it with robot content. I personally have not been impacted by AI yet because the type of shows I work on are comedy shows and it feels like that'll be one of the last things AI learns how to do. But it definitely will be able to. Just because it's not able to now doesn't mean it won't be in the future. But as we've been out here picketing with people from other unions, we've heard from our friends in SAG-AFTRA that voice actors are already feeling the squeeze from AI. The number of commercial auditions has shrunk a lot because people would rather just not pay a robot to read words. You've also seen it a lot in online media. There have been a lot of online media outlets. Most recently, BuzzFeed News, I believe, is shuttering, but they're going to pivot to using AI to replace a lot of their workforce. So writers have been impacted yet, and it's only a matter of time before it affects comedy variety as well. I don't think that, that AI would necessarily uh, affect the workplace as much as it affects how people get paid. If a studio executive has an idea for a rom-com and they feed it into a chat bot, it can spew out a story that they can then say they own the intellectual property to that story because it isn't really owned by anybody and then they can hire writers to adjust that story and give it some human qualities but then you're just being hired as a work for hire writer and you don't have any ownership of the material as writers we generate material we generate ideas that is part of how we sustain ourselves as creatives and owning the original material is a huge part of our sustainability. Writers are expected to continue to be on strike until they can come to an agreement. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.